So today we're going to be talking about what happened at the Amber Geiger Botham Johns sentencing trial. What the outcome was, who sentenced her, how much time she got, and also what the family and friends of both parties testified to. During this video, please know that this is for entertainment purposes only and to shed some light on what happened as well as what my opinion is. So if you're interested in hearing all the juicy details, then just stick around. my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So, yes, by the way, I've got my little lawyer outfit on. Do I look like a lawyer? Well, <laughs> maybe not completely. <laughs> I've got this little bodysuit here, and I've had it for a while. Look, so I just busted it out like kind of professional, kind of showy, and that's just what we're wearing today. Mm -mm -mm, I'm professional. Not. I'm definitely not professional. <laughs> so, alrighty, guys. We are going to be talking about what happened yesterday. Yesterday, Amber Geiger was sentenced. And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. A little bit of a spoiler alert. <laughs> Try not to get emotional. I cried all night last night. I had a very heavy heart. And um, I'm going to tell you guys everything, you know, how I feel about everything and what happened. I'm going to give you guys the facts as well as what I feel and why I feel that way. And also, I'm going to give you guys some information about Botham Jean and his foundation that was created for him that he was already working on, but that his family created that way in case you guys want to help or be involved in any way. So let's just get into this. If you guys don't already know, Amber Geiger chose, okay, in the state of Texas, you are allowed to do this. She chose whether she had, a, she had the options. Did she want to have a jury trial or did she want to have a judge trial? And they do that here in Florida as well. If you're going to trial, you can choose whether you want the judge to make the decision or whether you want a jury to make the decision. Okay, so she chose a jury trial. From what I've heard that there were 16 people and then I also have heard that there were 12. I'm not sure. What I can tell you, we never saw, we never saw the jury. What I can tell you is that it was a very diverse jury. Very diverse. Not all the same, you know, types of people. I cannot say certain words on YouTube, so I'm going to keep it advertiser friendly, I'm hoping. Anyways, so it was a very, very, very diverse jury. Also, then she had the decision whether she wanted the judge to sentence her or the jury to sentence her. The jury sentenced her, okay? The jury was watching this. The jury made the decision of whether she was innocent or guilty. They did find her guilty of murder, and then the jury had the decision of what the sentencing was. We're going to get through everything first. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know what the sentencing was, but we're just going to talk about everything first, and then I'm going to give that to you later. Okay. The mother took the stand. Now, I'm telling you guys, I watched this whole entire trial. I was glued to it, okay? I cried. I smiled. I felt sad. I felt happy. It was incredibly emotional. I cannot even imagine what the people in the courtroom actually felt like. The family of both parties, okay? I know a lot of people don't have a lot of compassion for Amber Geiger in this situation. There's a lot of people that are very infuriated. I understand that, but at the same time, she does have family that did nothing wrong that are hurting as well, other than just Amber. Her family's hurting too. So it was just incredibly stressful and emotional for everybody, okay? The mother got up there and testified, and I'm telling you guys, that is one of the strongest women I've ever seen. Like, I inspire to have the strength that that woman does one day. It was very, very emotional testimony. She talked a lot about how much Botham volunteered and helped others. And I don't mean just doing volunteer work, you know, organized volunteer work, which he did as well. This man, Botham John, was incredible. He did things on his own 
time you know she even told a story about there being like this little old lady and he was like walking around in this neighborhood i can't remember exactly all the details but you know she saw he he saw her and you know she was alone he went and cleaned up her backyard for her you know like he just did things like that there was you know there was a woman who had the had a, a, an older woman who had the same birthday as he did and he brought her a birthday cake on both of it was his birthday too and he brought her a birthday cake to celebrate her birthday like he was just a really really good guy both of jean's mom told stories about how like he would always fly home and fly to see family and he was really the glue that kept the family together see both of jean had two siblings he had an older sister who was about 10 years older than him and he has a younger brother who is about 10 years younger than him as well the mother and the father are still together and they had three children all spread out rough roughish area about 10 years in between all three of them and so he both of john was the middle child and he really kept them together kept the whole family together he was an he was just i just cannot stress enough what kind of human being this man was you know he was part of the youth groups he led you know songs in church he you know he just have i said have i have i mentioned what an incredible person that he was and so when his mother got up there and testified you know the strength that she had i just cannot imagine you know i just cannot imagine that you guys, the father got up there and tes testified, and he's a very strong man as well. I mean, I can just see why Botham Jean was such a great human being. When you see his parents, you realize, like, wow, the apple did not fall far from the tree. They're just amazing humans. They're incredible humans. He got up there and testified about how much time he spent with Botham. According to Botham's father, Mr. Jean, whenever Botham was born, his mother had to go back to university. So he spent most of his time with his father. He would talk about changing diapers and waking up and, and driving his son to his mother's house while he had to go to work. And he even said that, you know, like his mother, which was both of Jean's grandmother, would say like, leave him here. Mr. Jean would be working late night hours. And the grandmother would say, no, leave him here. And he said he never did. He went and got him every night because he just wanted to be with both of them. He said that his Sundays are ruined his Sundays will never be the same he said every single Sunday when both of Jean would get home from church from singing and you know church service and whatever he would call his father and they would talk and talk about the sermon and both of Jean would tell his dad what he was cooking and you know his dad would ask him to send a picture and he said he remembered a time you know he would say like he would see the food and he would go like who you got in the house cooking that? You got some woman in there hiding? There's no way you cooked that. You know, the dad would just like kind of pick at his son because his dad was a really good cook. And so therefore his dad was very proud because he knew that his son learned to cook from him. And like these special moments that happen every single Sunday are no longer. And every single Sunday he has a hard time. Every Sunday because both of them is not calling. It was very, very emotional. His dad cried many times on the stand although he tried to be strong and he was strong just because he was crying did not mean that he was weak in any way but you know it was in a very emotional testimony <sighs> and also his best friend alexis took the stand and that was very emotional everybody in the courtroom room was crying including the judge when alexis took the stand she talked about how she met both of john at university at harding university she talked about how close they became, came. They hung out every day in college. They talked every day. They were just basically inseparable. And even to the point when Alexis met her husband, the prosecution asked, you know, how did your husband feel about you having, you know, both of them, you know, this other man is your best friend. And she said, I told him right away that if he's going to be with me, he has got to love both of them as well because I cannot imagine my life without both of them. And then she broke down crying. It was very emotional, very, very, very emotional. The part that really got, I think, everybody during Alexis's testimony, Alexis was texting Botham the night that he was shot. 
she said that she was kind of having like a hard day in both of them and Alexis would always like send memes back and forth to each other to kind of make each other smile, you know, kind of pick at each other or whatever. And she said that he had made a meme of her and, you know, was joking with her, you know, whatever. And she said that in her phone, I don't know if you guys know, but in most iPhones, memories will pop up in your pictures and it'll kind of prompt you and remind you to look at the photos. And it did that night. And she sent them to both of them and she got a little emotional because, you know, she kind of said, you know, I'm a girl, you know, I'm like that girlfriend. I don't know about all y'all out there, my girls and my guys, but I'm very emotional like that too. I see pictures, I boo hoo hoo cry. I'm the same exact way, Alexis, you're not alone. She said she sent the pictures to both of them. She's texting him. This is the night that he got shot, right? She said that both of them said to her, like, why are you, you know, basically like picking out, like, why are you being like that? Why are you getting emotional, whatever? And she was like, you know, I'm a girl. And she was like, and I'm just so grateful every day. And she said, then she fell asleep, but both of them text her back, LOL. You know, he was kind of laughing at her. She says she goes to sleep and she wakes up the next morning and she sees his text of LOL. And then about six o'clock in the morning, she gets a phone call. The phone call was that both of them was shot and killed. She said she just couldn't believe it. She said she started screaming, wait, 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 wait. She said she collapsed on the floor. Wait, 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 wait. She said she called both of them. She said she called him seven times. She was just wanting him to answer the phone, wanting it not to be true, but it was true and he did not answer. He was dead. She says that she wishes every day that she would have told both of them that she was so grateful every day for him instead of just seeing, saying she was so grateful every day. She says she felt like if she would have just said to both of them, I am grateful for you every day, it would make this less painful and life a little bit easier to live. You guys, when I tell you that whole entire courtroom was crying, it was very emotional. This man touched so many lives, so many lives. Amber's mom took the stand and started testifying to things that happened to Amber as a little girl that were, you know, unimaginable, things that were very inappropriate. Amber's mom cried a lot. It was, it was, it was sad. It was, it was sad to see her mom up there crying and, and no child should be taken advantage of in any way. So I can definitely sympathize with her and Amber with that. Amber's friends took the stand talking about what a great person she was and how she tried to help other people around her and da 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 stuff like that. And then the lady took the stand for Amber which I think had the most impact for Amber's defense. Amber was working as a cop and she had busted into this house that people were doing a lot of substances, okay? She said that Amber pulled her to the side and said to her, what are you doing in here? You don't belong in here. Like you need to get your life together. Had a little chat with her. The lady said that she was so grateful to Amber for that. Amber had actually written her a ticket for the things that she was doing wrong. And the woman was in the house with like eight to 10 people and they were all getting messed up, okay? She said that that moment moved her so much that she went into a substance rehabilitation program and got clean. She said that Amber had changed her life so much to the point that Amber even came to her graduation. So it was very moving that Amber had changed this woman's life like that. The prosecution did not come to play, you guys. When I tell you they didn't come to play, they had search warrants for everything to do with Amber, including text messages, Pinterest, Facebook, Insta any social media she had, they searched. So when I tell y'all, don't play with the stuff that y'all are posting online. Be careful because it can come back to bite you and it did in this case. The prosecution showed very inappropriate text messages that I will not even speak about on here. Things that Amber had said, things that Amber had said against Martin Luther King, who is one of the most incredible men that ever lived, had the most powerful movement to this day and also Pinterest posts that she had shared and post about like shooting people and basically making light of it and fun of it. I will say that I know that people do have dark humor. I personally do not have dark humor, but I have people in my life that have dark humor, but some things just aren't funny. 
and the court did not find her post funny at all. I will also say that the judge was very careful in this case of everything. I think the judge did a great job of making sure both parties had a fair trial. Because you have to understand, if the judge makes one decision wrong or makes one mistake or overlooks one thing, Amber can come back as a mistrial or fight it or whatever and say it was unfair or this is a loophole. So the judge was very, very careful of everything that she did. And I have so much respect for this judge because her job was not easy in this case by no means. I do feel like the defense had a very weak case. I felt like that they didn't have a lot to go by. They didn't have a lot to really show. Okay, now, yeah, they brought a lot of her friends on there that said she was a great person, but we're always a great person to our friends, right? Like, those are the people that we care about. Those are the people that we love. We, we try to be good to them, right? But I really think that the Pinterest messages showed a glimpse of the soul. You know, the things that people do and say via text messages, via, you know, private messages, via, via places that you think nobody is going to see shows who the person really is deep down inside. So prosecution hit a home run with that, in my opinion. Amber did not take the stand in the punishment trial. I understand why she didn't but i also wish she would have and at least got up there and apolog apologized to the family i'm not actually an attorney although i look like one so i don't know if that would have been you know smart on her part or not but i i wish she would have from what i understand she did not take the stand in the punishment trial because the prosecution would have tore her alive so she chose not to I think another point that the prosecution was trying to prove in this case against Amber was the fact of her having an affair with her partner. Um, she basically showing like who she is in private, you know, who she is behind the scenes. Look at these text messages, look at these Pinterest posts, look at this affair that she's having with her partner that she knows is married and has children and his wife does not know. But at the end of the day, the jury went out. And the jury was only out about an hour and a half, which I was shocked. I really felt like they were going to deliberate or decide longer on her sentence. But when they came back, they gave her a sentence of 10 years. Okay, 10 years. Now, this was the part that I was a bit upset about. Prosecution, when they were doing this trial, they actually asked, and typically they don't do this because this can backfire on you sometimes. Prosecution stood up there and asked, the jury they said please do not give her anything less than 28 years because that is how old both of them would be right now i'll be honest with you guys i thought she was going to get at least 20 years i thought she was going to get at least 20 years i was shocked that she only got 10 years i know that there's a lot of you guys out there that have sent me messages on instagram and have left me comments saying oh well you know you should know this was an accident it's not like she did this in cold blood and da 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 I respect your opinion, and I'm not trying to change your opinion, so I'm not asking you to try to change mine either. I have been to prison. If you don't know, hi, my name is Christina Randall. When I was 21, I did three years in prison in the state of Florida myself. I have been there. I know that she will be eligible for parole in five years, seven years. I'm not sure what it's like in Texas. She may only serve three years. She may only serve five years. You know... Her family can come and see her. Her family can call her on Sundays. Both of them's father cannot call him on Sundays. You know, yes, it was an accident, but there were so many red flags that she missed and so many other ways that she could have changed what she did. She could have never even went into that door. She could have not shot. I mean, think about it, you guys. What, like I've said before, what if she would have had a busted pipe and there was an emergency and she had people in there fixing a busted? It really could have been any other situation. She could have done, taken so many other routes than what she did. And this family's life will forever be changed. Hers will forever be changed too. I'll get to that in a moment. But you know, I really wanted the family to be able to have peace in this. And I talked to my husband about this last night and I cried and I cried, but it ain't about me. So nobody, this is not about me. 
I was just very emotional last night thinking about the family, what they have been through, what they are going through, what they will forever go through. Christmases will never be the same. Thanksgivings will never be the same. Every Mother's Day will hurt for the next 50, 60 years, however long. Every Father's Day will be painful because one child is missing. Every Mother's Day will never be the same because a child is missing. And to all of my friends out there that have ever lost a child, you know what I'm talking about. You understand. And he did nothing wrong. She has a life. They will be able to call her, go and see her. She will get out one day. If she would have gotten 20 years, from what I understand, from what I heard people talking about, she would have only served 10 years because she would have gotten out on parole. So yes, I was upset with the verdict of 10 years. My personal opinion, I was. But you know, I was talking to my husband about this for a long time last night. And although he feels like she should have gotten more time as well, in his opinion, he said something to me that was very profound when I was sitting on the couch crying, saying, I just want the family to have peace. Like I, you know, my concern was with the family, the victims. She's going to be okay. Trust me, she'll be okay. Amber will be fine. And Jeremy said to me, peace does not come with a sentence. And that really hit me. You know, he's right. Peace does not come with a prison sentence. Peace is going to have to come another way. Now let's talk about what I think is going to happen to Amber. She is not going to have an easy time and her life is forever changed too. I promise her life will never be the same. Even when she's out, this case is so high profile. She will, ne she will probably have to watch her back for the rest of her life or at least for a really, really, really long time. As far as in prison goes, if because she's in jail right now, they took her straight away. If I had to guess, she will do a lot of time, if not all of her time, in protective custody, in PC. And even in that, she's going to have to watch out for the, for the guards. She's not going to have, it's going to be, it's going to be very, very hard. There are a lot of people that are mad about this. You got to imagine, there are people watching this that have family members that are in prison in Texas right now. And they're talking to them on the phone saying, watch out for her. She's coming. That's the way it works in there. I'm sorry to tell you, but it does. Not even the fact that she's a cop. A cop going to prison? Who put every single one of those people in there? Their choices. If they were guilty, yes. But being arrested by a cop, okay? Although me personally, I do not have that those types of feelings against police officers. I am a huge huge supporter of the police officers. I've said this a million times. Or people who put their lives at risk for us every day. So to all of you guys that are out there that are, that are police officers or have family members that are police officers or loved ones or friends or military, any of you guys, let me, let, I just want you to know right now, I thank you and I am not against you at all. And I don't raise my children that way, but I'm just telling you guys the facts of what it's like on the inside. It is not going to be easy for her. I've told you guys this story before about being in prison with a woman who did a lot of heinous things to, okay? And they had to move her prisons because not only were the inmates doing bad things, but when they put her in PC in a cell in a room alone, the officers were doing bad. They weren't feeding her. They were, she was being hurt, a bunch of different things, okay? And that was, that case wasn't near as high profile as this one is. So with that being said, there's nothing we can do about that. There's nothing I can do about that to help her. There's nothing you guys can do about that to help her. She is going to have a hard time in there. That's just what it is. Now, hopefully for her sake, she can stay out of trouble enough, even if that is in protective custody or in isolation to where she can get parole at some point because she will get parole if she's not getting in trouble and then she'll get out and have to start all over again there but I guarantee you people are people are going to be waiting for her to get out they're going to be watching this they're going to be following this that's just the way it goes okay it's not going to be easy Botham's family has started a foundation called the Botham Jean Foundation and in that they are doing 
tons of amazing things. And one of those being helping other families that are in situations like they were in. Now I have donated. I will leave the link below if you guys want to check it out and donate as well. I think that that's a really good, good place to start or to show your support to the family. So if you would like to check it out and donate and you can, you know, if you, if you have it to give, there's also a, there is also a spot on here where you can volunteer. So even if you don't have money to give, you can also volunteer. So I will leave it linked below. You guys go and check that out. All right. The juiciest part of this whole entire trial. You guys didn't think I was going to forget about his brother, did you? After Amber was sentenced, the family had a chance to get up on the stand and speak and say something to Amber if they wanted to. The only person that chose to get up there was his little brother. The one that the family had actually been saying the whole time in the trial was nothing but a shell. He was not the same without his big brother Botham anymore. I think you know what I'm going to say if you guys were watching it. This was incredibly emotional. Good Lord, I cried so much I had snot dripping down me. Botham Sean's little brother, who was 18 years old, got up on the stand and he said to Amber, he said, I'm not going to get up here and tell you for the hundredth time what you've done and what you've taken from us. I think you know that already. He said, but I want to tell you that I forgive you and that I love you as a person. And he said, I didn't even want to tell my family this, but I'm going to say it now. He said, I didn't even want you to get in trouble. I didn't even want you to go to prison because my brother wouldn't have wanted that. He would have wanted you to give your life to Christ. He said he would, wanted, he would have wanted you to find Jesus. And that was so powerful for the brother to tell his brother's killer that he loved her and that he forgave her and that he wanted the best for her because that's what he said. He said, I want the best for you. He said, because that's what my brother Botham would have wanted. Whew. That was so inspiring to me. You know, that, that made me feel better about the case. And you know, this isn't my family to have, to have these feelings, but I'm just telling you guys how I felt. And it just really goes to show you how incredible this family is, how incredible the parents, what they, what an amazing job they did with their kids, you know, and also what kind of impact both of Jean had on the people around him for him to get up there and say, I forgive you. I want nothing but the best for you because that's what my brother would have wanted. Goodness gracious, you guys, it was a lot. And then the judge even stepped down. She went down and talked to the family, hugged the family, cried. The judge then went over and hugged Amber, which I saw a lot of people online were upset about. This was a very emotional trial and they had went through a lot. So, you know, the ending of this whole entire sentencing and this whole entire trial, things happened that have never happened before like this. Even people on the news, on ABC News, were crying and saying, oh, I've never seen anything like this before. It was incredible. And you want to know why? It was all because of Botham and his faith, what he believed in, what he believed was right, is still changing people to this day. So that, once again, it just shows you what kind of person Botham was. All right, my loves, I think I have rambled enough. I've told you guys just about everything. <sighs> Please consider this your Friday video. I wanted to get this out as soon as I could. I'll be back with you guys again on Monday. Once again, do not forget about the Botham Jean Foundation down below. If you want to at least go over there and read it, at least go click on it, see about it. You know, see, see what they're trying to do. Even if you cannot donate, that's perfectly fine if you can't. Or even if you cannot volunteer, it's okay. But go and check it out and go give it a little read. <sighs> Please, you guys, no arguing in the comment section down below. A bunch of people have mixed feelings on this. You guys know what I feel. I've told you guys many times here. And please, as always, do not forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. 
And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.